demonstrate the process of soldering. So we'll do that right away. The main thing about soldering is cleanliness of both, both the workpiece being soldered and the iron. And the second best thing, is, the second most important thing is properly heating. So what I'm going to do now is clean the tip. And this is a wet sponge and all I do is rub it like that. You notice how much cleaner it got right off the bat. After you do that, you need to retin the tip, which just puts a thin film of solder on there. And this, if you notice, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a, a orange looking substance on there. That's flux. That's in the center of the solder, which is a flow aid. And I'm just slinging the excess off there. So I got a nice clean tip. And the hardest part of the electronics on your guitar is, is making this puddle of solder in the center of the pot and soldering this leg to the body of the pot. So keeping with the cleanliness aspect, we want to rough this up just a little bit with some 400 grit. Doesn't take much. There might be a little oil left on here from when this was stamped. And then we'll take some denatured alcohol and just wipe that off. Make sure we have nothing left behind. That's very important when you solder something that the workpiece, the two things being soldered together have to have equal heat or else you'll come up with what's called a cold solder joint. If you try to solder a wire to this, and this is not as hot as the wire, it won't it won't stick. So I'm putting a little puddle on here. And I'm gonna apply the flat end of the iron on here and immediately it pulls all the heat out of the soldering iron. Now I can see the solder flowing a little bit around here. That's telling you that that is of a proper temperature. You want to get in there and get your puddle on there and then get out of there. You can see that it looks nice and liquid and nice and flat. That's properly tinned. If it looked, if that looked like that, if it was a bubble, a blob like that, that would be an indicator that this surface wasn't hot enough and that would be a cold solder joint. A cold solder joint, you can take your fingernail and just pop it right off of there. So it should be nice and flat like that. Let it cool naturally, don't blow on it or blow compressed air on it. But as you solder these components together, what you're going to want to do is tin each, each piece that you're, that you're soldering. And what that means is you're going to put a small amount of solder on it. So put the, put the iron in the, in the um, stand and then you just put a little bit on there and and touch the solder to the wire. That way you know it's hot. You can see the solder flow all the way up to the insulation. That lets you know that it's the right temperature. So every surface that you solder, or you're going to be soldering, before you do it, you want to tin it. When you get that build up on there, just clean your, clean your iron off. Put a little another drop on there. Now I'm going to tin these legs. And if you cover up the hole, it's all right. I'm not a real fan of sticking the wire through the hole and then soldering it. I think it just gets as much as if you solder on there, but that's your personal preference. So notice I'm touching the solder to the workpiece, not the soldering iron. That's how I know I'm getting a proper heat transfer. Now those three things are properly tinned. You notice they're not blobby looking. There's just a real light film of solder on them. Now one of the hardest things is um, soldering this leg to the case. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. And it's a matter of tinning both pieces. I'm going to tin this area right here where this is going to contact the case. So like I did before, I'll put a little bit on here to help it transfer heat. And I'll just touch the solder in between the case and the iron and you can see that that worked nicely. It's not blobby. That I was actually touching the, the solder to the case so I know the case was of the proper temperature.
Now what I'm going to do is just bend this back to where it's going to end up. And I'm going to bend it a little bit this way to make sure it's good and square. So that's actually touching that right now. So here's the beauty of tinning it. Since there's solder on both pieces, I'm going to put the soldering iron right in between the two pieces and you should see it, the solder flow together. That's how you know both pieces are the proper heat. When I do that, I will add a little extra. So I'm going to lay it right in between both of them. There. You can see the solder flow. Put, put a little extra on there. Perfect. It's nice and shiny. Not at all blobbed. That is an excellent solder joint. Now, I solder some wires on here to show you how you're going to do it when you get your wires. Like I said before, you want to make sure both pieces are tinned. We already tinned the legs. My iron's getting a little dirty. Okay, here's a tin piece of wire. I'm just going to lay it on there. And I also like to, I don't like to have a lot of extra hanging. I like to have the insulation right close to where I'm going to be. So I'm going to cut this off a little bit. So I'll just lay that right there. Get, get another little drop of solder on here. And just like with this leg, you'll see the solder flow. I'm going to heat the back of this and you'll see the solder flow. Let it cool naturally. Don't blow on it. And there's a nice solder joint. A lot of times if you blow on it, it'll cool too quick or unevenly, and it'll give you a dull finish. That's an indication of a, of a, of a cold solder joint. But if you notice, that's on there good. It's, anytime you want to check a joint to see if it's cold or not, you can pick that up with your fingernail. If you can pick that off of there, it's not a good solder joint. And a good solder joint is essential for your guitar to sound correct. So I'll solder this other wire on here. Get a little dirty here. I like this iron because it's good and hot. I can get on there and get out of there. It's a little bit long. Once again, I'm going to heat it from the back, and you'll see everything flow, just like that. Let it cool naturally. Perfect. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is, is how you're going to have a bundle of about six wires that you got to solder to this puddle that we've previously tinned. Now, I'm only going to have three. I'll cut these wires off and use those to show you. What I do on what I did with mine on this is I cut these wires a little extra long, and you're also going to have a bare wire, which is a ground wire. So you might need to hold these with with uh, needle nose because that bare wire, that heat's going to travel up there and burn your finger. What I do is I get these wires, get all the insulation lined up, and I'm going to twist them together before I tin them. So that way, when the solder flows, when I'm actually soldering it on here it's not going to, the wires aren't going to come apart because you want these all to be soldered on there in a group. So now I'm going to tin all of them. See the solder being sucked up on there? That's a good tin. That's good. Now since this is going on here, I'm going to put a little bit extra solder on my tip. Good and clean. And when I touch the soldering iron, I'm going to try to touch the case and the wire simultaneously so that it's all heated up together. Now you can see the solder flowing all throughout that puddle, so I'm going to come off now. You can see it cool. And that's the way it should look. It shouldn't be blobbed or... And there is no way 
that you're going to pull that off of there. You're going to break the wire first on a good solder joint. But if there's any doubt, take your finger or a screwdriver and try to pick it off. But that is not going anywhere. So that's the basics of the soldering process and good luck.